Welcome to my home. Hi, I'm Cindy Merritt and I'm your local real estate partner. And just like you, I live, work, and play in the Richmond, Virginia area and all around our wonderful surrounding counties. Today we are visiting with Michelle Mullins, our new friend, and she is the owner of Honest to Dog. Yes. And who do we have here? Uh, here we have a Mr. Jinx, Mr. who is Jinx. my 10 year old hound mix. Okay. Um, and then we have Callisto, who is a three year old golden retriever. Oh, they're beautiful. And they are my honest dogs. Um, they're the inspiration for everything I do. Okay, well, tell me about Honest to Dog. Where did the name come from and what do you do? Absolutely. I actually love telling that story because. It came about, I was um, going out on my own and starting my own training and behavior business uh -huh. and looking for that, that name that just rang true for me. And so I decided to poll the audience. I asked some very close friends and family that have worked with me for a long time and knew me, um, kind of to write down just 10 or 15 words that they thought described me best, described my training style best, okay. and just kind of made them think of me. And um, Every single one of them that I ask at some point in their list included the word honest. Oh, okay. And thus, Honest to Dog was born. Okay, all right. And Honest to Dog, you go to people's homes and you help them with their dogs and their behavioral issues and obedience training? Absolutely. Our goal is to bring out the best in your dog, so we really look for what fits in your lifestyle, what kind of lifestyle you're looking to lead with your particular dog. Uh -huh. And every dog's an individual, so we deal with everything from your basic training, sits, downs, come when called, that sort of thing, uh -huh. to more uh, difficult behavior issues like dogs that might be fearful, reactive, or even aggressive. So even when you have perhaps a, a rescue dog and they have um, uh, abandonment issues or anxiety issues when their pet parent leaves and that kind of thing, you can work with that? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it's not uncommon, especially for rescue dogs, they've often been in situations where they've been in a kennel for a while and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of go back to the basics with them a little bit, do some remedial house training because they might have lost some of that while they've been in, you know, their rescue situation unless they were in a foster home or something. Um, and then also with separation issues because we often, we get our dogs um, and we'll spend, you know, a couple days with lots of time with them and then we have to go back to work, right? Right. And things like that. So um, just kind of making that transition easier and then helping them if they have any of that separation distress that crops up from there. How long have you been in the in the pet business, in the, in the training business or dealing with dogs and animals? Sure. Well, I've certainly loved animals all my life mm -hmm. since I was a little girl. Me I definitely too. have that, that story, right? <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, we yeah. definitely have that in common. Um, but for me, it really kind of took a turn probably about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I met an amazing mentor trainer here in Richmond, and uh, she kind of took a chance on me and said, you know, hey, I can, I can really see you doing this kind of thing, um, and mentored me, and then I've done a lot of education. Um, both online and at conferences and workshops and um, getting certifications and more education. Um, just over the last few years, I recently actually just became a certified dog behavior consultant. Oh. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Does that make you a dog whisperer? Uh, no, actually. <laughs> um, it, it makes me more certified than the dog whisperer. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> Well, can you show me some of the things that you do with um, with your dogs and, uh, and how you train them and stuff? Certainly. Well, I use a method called clicker training, um, um, often referred to as marker training as well. And if you've ever been to one of the um, uh, marine parks and seen dolphins or whales or anything like that being trained with whistles mm -hmm. um, and reinforcement of fish, it's basically the same concept. Okay. Um, it's been around for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's very science based. And it's all about letting the dog know when they got a behavior correct and then reinforcing that behavior because we do know that behavior that gets reinforced gets repeated. We start with the basics. Um, a hand target's nice because I can move her around to different locations with that. Uh -huh. um, I can even use it uh, to get her to come and call. So one of the things I love to do with dogs is teach them how to do cooperative care. That's basically um, them participating in their own types of care, whether it's um, examining their ears, listening to their heartbeat, getting groomed, 
um, out and filing their nails. And so now we're going to show you a little bit of that. And I usually start by teaching dogs a nice little chin rest. Hey, Calisto, chin. You just rest her chin here. Um, and so as long as she stays there, I can check out her ears and her teeth. Yes. Good job. And she gets rewarded for that. Chin. And she can choose to do it again. And I can even use the stethoscope. Chin. Chin. And listen to her heartbeat. She's really still. She doesn't have to be handled a lot because she's participating. And then I also like to teach dogs to help file their own nails. You can make these with little cheap cutting boards and some grip tape that goes on the edge of stairs, not sandpaper because sandpaper is a little too rough. And we'll see if we can get Callisto to give herself a little manicure. Hey Callisto, you hey, ready? Good job. So that dogs are actually helping in their own care instead of being, you know, kind of held and confined, which makes it a little bit more scary for them. Um, they get rewarded and reinforced with a lot of natural stuff. I like um, some grilled chicken, um, some leftover steak from dinner, oh, some okay. little bits of carrot, okay. um, anything that's really healthy for dogs and um, that they can have mm -hmm. makes great training treats as long as you make it really small. Oh, okay. Um, so that you can do lots of repetitions and practice. Try to avoid things like um, raw hides and pig's ears and things like that because those things don't digest well and they can get caught actually in their digestive tract and really cause foreign body problems and things like that. So I try to stay away from that kind of thing. Yeah, I've heard that rawhide is really actually bad for dogs. That yes. You should not give them that. I know chicken bones, no chicken bones. No chicken bones. No chicken bones. Um, no okay. cooked bones, really. No cooked um, bones. Things okay. that are really um, cooked, the bones get brittle. Okay. And can cause problems. Now, uh, when you're walking with them, I know a lot of counties have leash laws. So yes. it's really important if you don't have a fenced in yard and you have to be walking your dog that they learn to walk on a leash properly. Um, t tell me what you do to make that happen for the dogs. Is Absolutely. It, is it a certain side that they walk on? That kind of thing. Traditionally for competition obedience, it's been the left side. Mm -hmm. um, but for my pet dog clients, I tell them pick the side they're most comfortable with. It really doesn't matter. Um, I, my general rules, I like dogs to be about no more than an arm's length away so they're not actually pulling on their leash. Um, and so I try to re reinforce them when they're close to me. Um, I'll start off leash practicing inside just to get them used to walking near me. Okay. And then add the leash later. Oh, um, okay. And that usually helps the process a little bit because we have a tendency to kind of pull back when they pull, which can actually make the problem worse. Oh, okay. Um, so um, I focus on when they get close to me, marking that like we talked either with a clicker mm -hmm. um, or a marker word that I use like yes, so they know they got it right reinforcing that behavior so I get more of it and then I also teach my dogs um, a go sniff cue so that sometimes it's okay if we get to an area that I think might be really interesting you <laughs> okay. know um, the rabbits have been there or other dogs have visited there might be some pee mail they need to read and catch up on what's going on in the neighborhood <laughs> so I'll tell them go sniff and I'll give them a little extra lead so they can go and check things out because I mean let's think about it you know the walks really for the dog it's for them right. to sniff and enjoy themselves and they should get to do that too very good. How long does it take the average dog to become obedience trained enough so that, you know, the average pet owner can you know, have a sit and a stay and a come and that kind of thing? What's, what's the average length of time for a dog to learn something? It, it's hard to make a bit of an average for that because a lot of it depends on how much you practice. Ah, you know, it's more the parent, <laughs> not the fur baby. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, right. Like, you know, if you show up for, you know, your basic class or whatever once a week and you haven't practiced any in between, uh -huh. well, by the end of that, you know, six week class or whatever you're taking, you probably won't have those behaviors yet. If you put in a good five, ten minutes a day practicing that skill, mm -hmm. by the next week you'll you'll have it fairly solid. Okay, so um, the parent needs to practice just as much absolutely. as the dog does. Okay, <laughs> okay, good. Yes. good. 
So if you need some help with your dog obedience training, give Honest to Dog a call. Make yourself at home, make your fur babies at home, and you'll be really glad you did. Cindy Merritt is nationally recognized as a leader in the U.S. real estate market. Of the more than 35,000 realtors in Virginia, the American Institute of Real Estate Professionals consistently ranks Cindy in the top 10 best realtors in the state. Make Yourself at Home is sponsored in part by Paul Adams, branch manager and nationally recognized senior loan officer with Prime Lending, a Plains Capital company. With over 400 mortgage options available, Paul Adams and his team work hard to uncover the key to each client's mortgage success.